there's a church in Savannah, Georgia called First African Baptist Church. And this church was built in 1859 by slaves. And on the side of the pews is Hebrew writing. Um, it is a mixture of Hebrew Latin writing. It's called Landino. There's a church in Savannah, Georgia called First African Baptist Church. And this church was built in 1859 by slaves. And on the side of the pews is Hebrew writing. Um, it is a mixture of Hebrew Latin writing. It's called Landino, right? And uh, the Landino is Hebrew Latin. Why? Because Spain and Portugal, right? I want to introduce you to a Semitic writing that can easily be mistaken for Arabic. Unfortunately, many have ran with the notion that the pew in question is Arabic. Again, the key word is type, which means having common characteristics. There is a language that resembles Arabic. As you see, it's not Arabic. That language is called Judeo-Spanish. This is a language that was spoken by the Sephardic Jews. This language can be written in print, which is called the Rasi. It can also be written in a cursive script called Solitreo. So how did this language reach the coast of Savannah? To answer that question, it starts with understanding the Spanish Inquisition. It is documented that the Sephardic Jews or Black Jews occupied territories in West Africa called Sotome. They also occupied territories in Brazil, such as Salvador, such as Salvador, such as Salvador, such as Salvador. For the sake of time, I am only going to transliterate the middle word on this particular pew. The first First word from the right has letters that overlap or appear to have been written over. The key to understanding how to read each pew is knowing that the pews read from top to bottom. This is equivalent to Hebrew, Aramaic, Arabic, Judesmo, and other Semitic languages that reach from right to left. I want to make this clear. Professor David Bunis, who specializes in this language, does not support nor endorse what I am going to share with you. However, his work does. I am going to use his work on Judesmo and more specific Solitrio as a source which gives a strong case that this Arabic type of writing is what you see on the pew in question. Let's start with the first letter. Now I can say with absolute confidence, this letter is the Yod. The Yod means redemption, hand, outstretched arms. In Judasmo, the Yod is basically a dot, but in the case of the pews, it would look like the lowercase L in the English language. In this case, it would look like this. The two Yods side by side at the beginning of a word is pronounced Ye, as in Yevar. However, the two Yods side by side in the middle of a word makes the A sound. These Masoretic points is called the Saray and the Saray Yod. Again, both the Masoretic points or marks makes the long A sound. What's also interesting is that in the Germanic language, the two dots over the letter are called an umlaut, which makes the same A sound. The Yod is basically a dot, so that would come out like this, that's Yod. The Yod is basically a dot, so that would come out like this, that's Yod. The Yod is basically a dot, so that would come out like this, that's Yod. The next letter is the Zion. The numeric value of this letter is seven. This letter means weapon. The letter Zion is written in this way with the exception of the hook at the bottom of the letter. Now I want to reiterate a key point for you to understand and you will hear me repeat this over and over again. The symbols within this language are written at the convenience of the writer. All the signs in a collection have to be interpreted before the meaning is understood. The same rules apply not only for the symbols within this language, but also to the letters written on the pews. The letter Zion is written this way. The letter Zion 
is written this way. The letter Zayin is written this way. The next letter is the Resh. This letter means head, protocol. The letter Resh can be written in two ways. It can be written in the traditional Hebrew style, or it can be written to tower above the other letters. See, in Solatrio, the Resh followed by the two Yods would be pronounced Re. The letter Resh takes this form in square and um, in Judesmo, it tends to be a, a tall letter, so it's either written above the other letters this way, and it often has a loop on top. The letter Resh takes this form in square, and um, in Judesmo, it tends to be a, a tall letter, so it's either written above the other letters this way, and it often has a loop on top. Lastly, we have the letter Lamed. The numeric value of this letter is 30. And this letter means disciple, learn, teach. This letter takes several forms in Judesmo Solitrio. The predominant form is what you see. In many cases, with a loop at the top of the letter. Again, I want to reiterate a key point for you to understand. The symbols within this language are written at the convenience of the writers. All the signs and a collection have to be interpreted before the meaning is understood. The same rules applied not only to the symbols within this language, but also to the letters written on the pews. Letter Lamed, which is written this way in square, takes several forms in Judesmo, in Soletreo. Uh, up until around the end of the 19th century, it tended to be written this way. And then from that, then on, the predominant forms are this form in Turkey, this form in Salonika, and additional forms like this in other parts of the Judaism speaking world. Letter Lamed, which is written this way in square, takes several forms in Judaism, in Soletreo. Uh, up until around the end of the 19th century, it tended to be written this way. And then from that, then on, the predominant forms are this form in Turkey, this form in Salonika, and additional forms like this in other parts of the Judaism speaking world. Together, they are pronounced Yez Re El. Yez Re El. Yez Re El. Yez. There's a church in Savannah, Georgia called First African Baptist Church. And this church was built in 1859 by slaves. And on the side of the pews is Hebrew writing. Um, it is a mixture of Hebrew Latin writing. It's called Landino, right? And uh, the Landino is Hebrew Latin. Why? Because Spain and Portugal, right? And uh, the Hebrew language was not revived until, according to America, I think 1881, right? So this is roughly 30 years beforehand. So who taught them how to do this? When you look at this writing, you know, why is it that this Landino is being spoken with because we learn in history books growing up, it's like, oh, well, you know, they were illiterate. No, I, I, if I go to Asia, I'm not illiterate. I just don't, you know, their language. They had a language before they arrived here. You know what I'm saying? So if that language was pure to them and this is what they were writing on the side of the pews and no one taught it to them, I think that's worth seeing. Come to find out, as a child, I would go there to our family reunions because it was my ancestors who built that church. And so understanding the rich part of my history, knowing that whoever these people were, that were my ancestors, were the ones who put, put their hands to build these and write these letters on there, that's who I'm connected to. And they called themselves Hebrews. So I call myself Hebrew. So uh, it's an ethnic claim first, you know, um, and has, not to say it has nothing to do religiously, because um, there are religious principles that apply, but I, I don't take the religious aspect and then say, oh, I now call myself a da 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 because what happens is people hear that and their mind is shifted so quickly because I say that. They don't even want to associate um, to a term that is being uh, used so, so, so generically. 
Uh, it's a pleasure also to be able to speak about and demonstrate the solit what's today called the Solitreo script of the Sephardic, the, the Judaism or Ladino speaking Jews, uh, because it's, as Devin pointed out, one of the most distinctive features, visually at least, of Sephardic Jewry. When people today speak about Solitreo, and this is probably true from maybe the middle of the 19th century, they mean the distinctive Hebrew cursive script used by Judaism speakers to write their language. Um, it's a script that began to be used in the Middle Ages. We have good examples, beautiful examples, as a matter of fact, of its use for writing Judeo-Arabic in Spain. Uh, and then f with the transition from Islamic Spain to Christian Spain, Jews continued to use and develop uh, varieties of uh, this uh, script. Jews continued to use and develop uh, varieties of uh, this uh, script. Jews continued to use and develop uh, varieties of uh, this uh, script.